I will now begin the sixth lecture on the book of Joshua. I will lecture on chapter six of Joshua. This chapter records the triumph over Jericho. This battle was important. This battle was significant in conquering the land of Canaan. But this castle, Jericho, was difficult to conquer because it was a strong fortress. How firm was the castle? It was very fortified that it was possible to build a house above the ca castle wall. This tells us that there will be spiritual battles on our journey to heaven. That is why there is a heavenly church and the earthly church today is in a war. We must fight these spiritual, spiritual battles to preserve our soul and to mature in faith. Only those who triumph in these spiritual battles can have their faith mature and participate in the glory. Then how can this fortress be conquered by the Israelites? God provided ways of how to conquer the fortress and it is recorded in verses 1 through 7. Read verse 1. Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. These people tightly shut the fortress to defend against the Israelites. Verse 2, Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with this kings and its fighting men. God has assured them of victory, even though Jericho was fortified. He promised that they can conquer Jericho if they obey his commands. Likewise, if we advance by faith in God, we can triumph over our problems. But what should the Israelites do in order to conquer Jericho? Verse 3. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. First, it is written to march around the city once with all the armed men for six days. They have to march around the city for six days. This seems to sound illogical from a human perspective. God ordered them to march around the city instead of seizing it through equipment or weapons. What can we learn from this? It instructs us to constantly obey the Word of God. We must obey it even though we cannot understand it. Although it may seem impossible, God will accomplish the task if we simply obey Him. One thing 
that it requires of us today is obedience. He uses the obedient ones to carry out his plans and eras. Furthermore, they must not rest one day because they are tired. They must continually obey Him even though they are exhausted. In such a way, we must not neglect our faith on the journey. We must not cease to pray. We must not stop from serving or worshiping God. We have to persevere as God commands us, and we will experience His miracles if we faithfully obey Him. In verse 4, God commanded them to march around the city for seven times on the seventh day. Verse 4, have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark, on the seventh day, march around the city seven times. It is stated that seven priests must carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, they were to march around the city seven times. But these commands seem irrational. But God commanded them to march around the city seven times because they had to show complete obedience to God. They would obviously grow weary when they march around the city for seven times. We can learn one important truth from this. It instructs us that we, if we depend on God instead of our strengths, his, He would show His powers through it. There are numerous people who have failed because they trusted their own strength. If we obey and accomplish our tasks in God's methods, we will experience the miracles of God. In ver and in verse 5, when they hear the sound of a long blast on the trumpets, The Israelites have to give a loud shout. Verse 5. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse. The mission of the priest is to blow the trumpets made of a ram's or, or a ram horn. But why is this so? The sound of a trumpet was used to awaken the people and assure their victory. It was, an, it was used as an encouragement that they can triumph in the battle. Also, the people just had to give a loud shout in unity. In verses 6 through 7, the armed guards had to go ahead of the ark of the Lord. Verse 6, So Joshua son of Nun called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Armed guards were on the front line. And next were the seven priests carrying the horns. Behind them were priests carrying the Ark of the Lord. And at the end were armed guards. This instructs us to be centered around church and serve God in an orderly manner. But why did God give such order? The workings of God are above human comprehensions. Sometimes humans think differently from God. 
but we can triumph if we obey the commands of God, even though they seem to not make sense. Our trust must not depend on our understanding. Also, even though they go against our experience, we must still believe in the methods of God. His works transcends human knowledge and experiences. Also, what God requires of us is obedience until the end through perseverance. In 2 Kings chapter 5, when, when the commander Naaman approached Elisha for healing, he ordered Naaman to wash himself seven times in the Jordan River. In the beginning, however, the commander decided to return to his home because he could not understand it. But because of his servants appeal to Naaman, he went to Jordan River and was healed because he washed himself seven times. We must remember that this leprosy was not healed on second, third, or fifth time. He was healed at the seventh time. Likewise, Jericho stood firm until the seventh day. It, it collapsed when they marched around seven times and gave a loud shout on the seventh day. In verses 8 through 14, the people obeyed and marched around the city for six days. Verses 8 through 9, when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. The armed guards marched ahead the priests who blew the trumpets. You must notice that everyone's role was divided. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets blew the trumpets. And other priests carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. And there were people who followed the priests. What does the blowing the trumpet teach us? Trumpets were used to awaken the hearts of the people. Do not fear the people from Jericho. God has put them in our hands. We can surely trump, triumph over them. Jericho will fall if we obey the commands of God. The duty of the Lord's servants today is to blow the trumpet. They must proclaim the word of God and teach and lead the people to God. And the priest carried the Ark of the Covenant. The ark symbolizes the church and the presence as well as the covenant of God. If God helps us in, in accomplishing certain tasks, we will accomplish it. If God is with a man, he will prosper wherever he goes. In Genesis 39, Joseph was sold to Egypt as a slave. He became a slave of the household of Potiphar. 
but it is written that he became prosperous because God was with him. He truly prospered wherever he went because God was with him. Likewise, likewise, if God is with us, we can overcome any trials we face today. That is why we can accomplish any tasks if God is with us. Students will prosper if God is with them, and businessmen will prosper if God is with them. If God is with a certain church, the church can grow as well. Therefore, we must be conscious of God in whatever we do. But what is required of us to be with God? We must please Him in our life. He is with us if we please Him. We also must obey the Word of God. No matter how important position we are in, God will forsake us if we rebel against His Word. And we have to live a holy life. God is holy. That is why God is with us when we live a holy life. Next, in verses 10 through 14, Joshua warned the people to keep silent when they marched around Jericho. Verse 10, But Joshua had commanded the people, Do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. It is written, Do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices. Then he ordered them to shout when God commands them to do so. While marching around Jericho, they were to be discreet and silent. Whatever the commands of God are, we must follow them. If God orders us to march, we must march. If He tells us to be quiet, we must be quiet and shout if He commands us to do so. God takes care of us when we obey His commands. Verse 12 Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Joshua got up early in the morning. The servants of God must be diligent and sincere. Also, just like how Joshua got up early in the morning, we must begin our days by praying to God. Early morning prayers are important today. Even Jesus began his ministries with a prayer early in the morning. We must start the day with a prayer. We must pray harder when we are busy. And waking up early indicates complete obedience. We must not hesitate when God commands us. In Genesis 22, God commanded Abraham to offer his only son, Isaac, on Mount Moriah. Abraham did not hesitate to obey God's command. He woke up early and took firewood to Moriah. Likewise, 
we must obey right away when God gives His command. In verses 13 through 14, the Israelites marched around the city for six days. It was emphasized in verses 13 through 14 that they have repeated uh, marching around the city for six days. Why did Joshua repeatedly record the same content? He did it to completely obey the word of God. Verse 14. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. On the second day, then they have marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They have marched around the city once for six days. We must constantly and completely obey God's word. The method cannot be understood through human logic. But men cannot comprehend the works of God. If we trust and obey God, even though we cannot understand His works, He would surely work. Furthermore, in verses 15 through 19, Joshua is instructing what the Israelites must do when Jericho falls. Verse 15, on the seventh day they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times the same manner. In verse 15, it is written that they got up at daybreak on the seventh day. Just like the instruction of God, they marched around the city seven times only on that day. They also got up at daybreak on that day. On the seventh day, they marched around the city seven times. They had to do it diligently. This teaches us that we need perseverance. Believers today truly need perseverance. There are many people who failed because they did not persevere. But why does God require us to persevere? It is to receive the promise after we have accomplished the will of God. Farmers must be patient to har harvest in time. God helps us if we constantly obey Him out of perseverance. In verse 16, Joshua commanded the people to shout. When the priests sounded the trumpet for the seventh time, he said, For the Lord has given you the city. Priest sounded the trumpet. And the people shouted just as Joshua commanded. He shouted, The Lord has given you the city. And the people were united in one faith. They shouted with one heart and one will. Today, if the church members are united in one faith, regardless of their number, and if they have order, they can accomplish the great works of God. God is a God of order. Everyone in church has different roles. There is a priest who carries the Ark of the Covenant who sounds the trumpet 
And there are people who obey the words of Joshua. Each of them must fulfill their duties. Also, they can experience great works of God when they unite in one faith. The people of Israel obeyed the words of Joshua. Even today, redeemed saints must obey the word of God to receive blessings. Next, it is written, all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Verse 17, the city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall be spared. When they triumph in war, they might take enemies' possessions as war trophies. But Joshua commanded the people to devote them to God. Why? He did it to teach them that they were victorious through God. And all things belong to God because He gave them victory. That is why they must glorify God. However, the prostitute Rahab was protected from destruction. She protected the two spies from the past. At that time, her family was promised to be protected when Jericho falls. We saints must keep promises made with people and God. We must fulfill the promises we have made to God and with other people to keep their trust. In verse 18, it is stated, but keep away from the devoted things. He commanded accordingly to prevent them from taking possession of the devoted things and fall into temptation of greed. Everything belongs to God, and He is the cause of victory. He deserves all glory. In verse 19, it is written that devoted things of God must enter in His treasury. Surely, God could encourage them to take possession of devoted things. However, to teach them a genuine lesson, Devoted things were stored in the treasury of God. Because their victory came from God, He deserves all glory. We must not take credit for ourselves. We must confess that we have triumphed through His grace and give glory to God. And because the Israelites obeyed by faith, Jericho collapsed before their eyes. Verse 20, when the trumpet sounded, the people shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the people gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So every man charged straight in. At the sound of the trumpet, when the people gave a loud shout, The wall collapsed. The great miracle of God occurred at that time. 
even today, this kind of miracle takes place in the life of those who trust and obey God. The power of God is infinite. He works above the understanding of men. Destroying the walls of Jericho was impossible through human power. Thus, even though the word of God sometimes seems to make no sense, and even though it is contradictory based on our experiences, we must believe and obey it because it is the word of God. The work of God can truly happen to those who believe and obey today. Why can people not experience the work of God? It is because they doubt and rebel against the word of God in this belief. When we believe and obey God, we can experience these kinds of miracles. It is written, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, in one of the hymnals. We will experience the grace of God as much as we believe in his word. God is truly alive. His power is limitless. He can accomplish things that are impossible through human strength. Next, the Israelites not only destroyed the walls of Jericho, but also wiped out the inhabitants. Verse 21, They devoted the city to the Lord, and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it. They destroyed everything in the city. It was so merciless that it could seem cruel in human sight. Why did they have to do it so ruthlessly? It signifies that we must completely destroy the power of sin and Satan. Let's say that a building is caught on fire. Should we completely extinguish the fire, or should we leave some? If we choose to do latter, its flame will get bigger. It is possible that the remaining inhabitants might harass the Israelites. If they survive the battle. This teaches one important lesson to us. We must thoroughly, <coughs> thoroughly repent of our sins. We must throw away any forms of evil in our heart. If a seed of sin remains in our heart, it might grow one day. A lighter sin eventually becomes darker later on. Lie about a small thing. Later on, you will lie about more significant things. We must throw away every wickedness we have in our heart. We must cast any forms of evil. Next, in verses 22 through 25, the account of the Israelites protecting the family of Rahab is recorded. Verses 22 through 23, Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, Go into the prostitute's house, 
and bring her out, and all who belong to her, in accordance with you with your oath to her. So the young men who had done the spying went in and brought out Rahab, her father and mother and brothers, and all who belonged to her. The family of Rahab was all brought out. Brought out. Her family was saved because of her faith. In Acts 16:31, it is written, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And in verse 24, her family and her belongings were all protected. Why did the Israelites protect her family and her belongings? The reason is written in verse 25. Verse 25. But Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute with her family and who, were, who belonged to her because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies. She hid the two spies in her house. What does this teach us? If we help the work of God, and serve his servant, he will certainly pour his grace and blessings upon us. God keeps his promises. As Rahab hid the two Israelites' spies, she requested one thing from them. Her request was to protect her family when the city of Jericho falls in their hands. And the two spies told her to tie a scarlet cord outside of the window. Then they promised that they would protect her household during the conquest. The promise of God will surely be fulfilled. Rahab was an immoral person. But because she cooperated through faith, she was saved by faith and received blessings from God. Likewise, as we become part of churches, we must find ways of how we could serve better. How, what should I do to benefit the church and serve the servant of God? We must realize that God repays according to our faith and actions. He justly judges good and evil. He blesses those who live righteously and punishes the unrighteous. That is why the family of Rahab and their belongings were all protected. God is still alive today. Dear saints, I urge you to contribute to the kingdom of God by using your talents and gift and by serving the church. In verse 26, it is stated that whoever rebuilds the city will be cursed by God. Verse 26, 
At that time, Joshua pronounced the solemn oath, cursed before the Lord is the man who undertakes to rebuild the city Jericho. It is written that if anyone rebuilds this city, at the cost his firstborn son will lay its foundation, and at the cost of his younger will he set up his gates. What can we learn from this? God judges those who rebuild what he has destroyed. Everyone who rebelled against God and harmed his people were all destroyed by him. But if someone rebuilds those things again because it is rebelling against God, he will bring judgment against that person. That word was fulfilled in 1 Kings 16.34. It was fulfilled in Ahab's time uh, to heal of Bethel. Therefore, we must educate ourselves with the word of God and obey Him. If we disobey the word of God, punishment and curse will be upon us. What can we learn from this? If we rebel against the word of God and disobey Him, sufferings will indeed fall upon us. Verse 27, So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout the land. The fame of Joshua was spread throughout the land. Because God was with him. Normally, people try their best to be famous. But only those who are exalted by God can become famous. How was Joshua's fame spread throughout the land? There were two ways. First, God was with him. Likewise, even today, the world cannot defeat the companion of God. So the people of the world fear such a person. Next, what or why was his fame spread throughout the land? He became famous after he conquered Jericho. We will be likewise be exalted if we triumph in spiritual battles, the good fight of faith. This is the end of the sixth lecture on the book of Joshua. Thank you.